Greetings from Pavlo Ardano, Fulbright Research Scholar at the Agricultural Sustainability Institute, University of California, Davis, and co-founder of the NGO Permaculture in Ukraine. Welcome to the series of video lectures on designing crop polycultures, which is supported by the International Visegrad Fund. The topic of this lecture is intercropping and designing crop polycultures. In the first part, I will review basic ecological processes that we will need to be aware of when combining different crops. The lecture is designed for the academic courses, thus it contains some advanced biological information. But it also contains a lot of practical information for growers. You can decide which section to skip uh, depending on your preferences. On the description to this video you will find the links to different sections of this video lectures as well as to slides where you can uh, study spreadsheets to design your own intercropping schemes. Generally, polycultures are more productive, utilize soil resources and photosynthetically active radiation more efficiently, resist pests, epidemics and weeds better, produce more varied and nutritious food, better utilize local resources and contribute to economic stability, social equity and farmers' direct participation in decision making. Multi-species systems that provide several products can maintain a more stable income, particularly if price variation for those products are not correlated. Recent analysis of 939 intercropping observations demonstrated that intercrops produced 38% more gross energy and 33% more gross incomes on average, while using 23% less land than monocrops. Agroecosystems biodiversity performs a variety of ecological services beyond the production of food, including recycling of nutrients, regulation of microclimate and local hydrological processes, suppression of undesirable organisms and detoxication of noxious chemicals. Both planet biodiversity, which is determined by farmer and associated that will colonize the agroecosystem after it has been set up by the farmer, promote ecosystem functions in agroecosystem. For example, weeds are particularly important for sustaining pollinators and biocontrol organisms, and native plant species usually support higher number of native insect species. Ecosystem functioning is improved not due to species richness per se, but rather by functional diversity or functional differences between species and the relationship between species in space and time. Increase in functional group diversity has the greatest impact on ecosystem services, where a few uh, functional groups are represented to begin with, as in uh, monoculture systems. It has been also demonstrated that a relatively small number of species is likely to reach a high level of efficiency for the function in question, for example, to reach a limit of biomass production with few most productive species. While introducing functional redundancy or increasing number of species that contribute in equivalent way to an ecosystem function has less prominent effect on provisioning of ecosystem services. In ecology, a positive relationship between diversity and functioning holds for only 5-15 species. However, functional redundancy, as well as high diversity of functional groups, increase system resilience or capability to withstand and quickly recover after stresses, when one species may substitute for another. This is called insurance hypothesis of biodiversity. It should be noted that agroecosystem management with the sole target to increase provisioning of ecosystem services may contradict the aim of preserving rare species, as later may contribute little to uh, ecosystem functioning. Plant biodiversity in cultivated ecosystems can reduce the impact of weeds, animal pests and diseases by the following mechanisms. Resource dilution and stimulodeterrant diversion. Disruption of spatial cycles, disruption of temporal cycles, allelopathy effects, general and specific soil suppressiveness, crop physiological resistance, conservation of natural enemies and facilitation of their action against aerial pests, and direct and indirect architectural or physical effects. To achieve efficient biocontrol, diversity should be managed on all trophic levels, 
and it is obvious that total elimination of pests will result in collapse of the whole network of predatory organisms. Provision of ecosystem services is one of the primary targets in agroecosystem management. Some organisms called bioindicators respond more quickly and definitely to agroecosystem management and correlate with diversity of other organisms. They can be used uh, to evaluate the level of ecosystem services. Primary uh, groups uh, include uh, earthworms, uh, soil structure drivers responsible for uh, air and water circulation and drainage, organic matter decomposition, cast enriching activity, and soil fertility. Mesofauna, including mites and springtails, which uh, comprises mainly detrivores and uh, small uh, preys and predators. Soil bacteria and fungi, promoters of organic matter decomposition, nutrient cycles, uh, soil enzymatic uh, activities and improvement of uh, soil root uh, water relationship. Key predators, including uh, carabids and parasitoids, natural control agents uh, for uh, crop pest population. Crop weeds and field margin vegetation, which uh, can act as a shelter for overwintering, provide uh, alternative food sources uh, for useful fauna, and can attract pollinators in the field area. Some bioindicators, uh, such as uh, predators and parasitoids, are more sensitive than others. They belong to higher trophical levels of food web which are uh, first that can be impacted uh, by the environmental perturbation. Ecosystem productivity in diverse systems is enhanced by niche complementarity, where a community of species whose niches complement one another is more efficient in using resources. Due to similar resource needs and hence greater niche overlap, there is usually an intense competition between individuals of the same species for light, water and nutrients. This is often referred as Johnson Cornell hypothesis, and negative conspecific feedback is uh, uh, pre prevalent in forest, particularly at germination and establishment stages. However, positive feedback is observed for ectomycorrhizal trees, where seedling growth and survival is promoted by proximity to conspecific or belonging to the same species adult. Different species differ in the way uh, they find and use resources, thereby limiting interspecific competition. This niche segregation is called interspecific complementarity, where species uh, use different resources or use the same resource but separate its utilization in time and space. Most studies show a combined effect of temporal, spatial and chemical complementarity. The balance between competition and complementarity change constantly, depending on uh, changes in environmental condition or on the stage of plant development. For instance, as nodules are not well developed in the early stage of the life of legume, until the legume acquires sufficient ability to fix atmospheric nitrogen, the legume and intercropped plant, for example cereal, are in direct competition for uh, mineral nitrogen. In general, resource partitioning makes it possible to shorten the length of the period uh, of competitive uh, relationship between plants. And in fact, competition almost always occurs within plant communities. And it is not necessary a handicap for intercropping as long as complementarity is stronger than competition and improves the overall use of resources. The local environment determines which functional complementarities between plants sustain growth and production under resource limitation. For instance, when uh, nitrogen, water or phosphorus is the main limiting resource, then complementarity for nitrogen use between uh, legume and uh, non-legume species, for water use between C3 and C4 species, for phosphorus use between uh, phosphorus mobilizing and non-mobilizing species becomes the most advantageous, respectively. 
Therefore, combining uh, plants with different functional uh, uh, types, as in this example, in particular uh, with consideration of growth limiting conditions, is the approach to design polycultures with improved resource use efficiency. An example of temporal complementarity is sowing clover in the spring under a winter wheat cash crop. The growth of the main crop is not impaired by the growth of the legume, which remains poorly developed during the intercropping period and then increases its growth rate once the wheat has been harvested. The complementary root systems have the following characteristics. Morphological plasticity, root location in time and space, investment in root biomass or root growth rate and uh, shoot to root biomass ratio, root length and surface, and physiological plasticity, rate of resource uptake in relation to enzyme functioning. The components of the mixture may be complementary in a spatial sense by exploring different layers of the soil with their root systems. An example is a closely spaced mixtures of maize, bean, squash, where maize forged relatively shallower, common bean explored the vertical soil profile more equally, while the root placement of squash depended on phosphorus availability, and the density of lateral root branching was significantly greater for all species in the polycultures than in monocultures. Competition can promote niche stratification between intercropped plants. For example, barley root system use deeper soil layers when intercropped with pea plants. Such spatial segregation of the root system is uh, also often observed in agroforestry. For example, walnut roots explore deeper soil layers when intercropped with winter wheat. Components of uh, a mixture may uh, complement uh, each other nutritionally if they have different needs in uh, uh, quantities or abilities of uh, species to mobilize different chemical forms of nutrients, which is called chemical complementarity. Chemical complementarity includes nitrogen fixation by legumes, mobilization of organic and unorganic nitrogen pools by different species of associated mycorrhizal fungi, production of different sets of nutrient mobilizing enzymes and siderophores by plants itself and by associated microbial communities. Factors that affect the light regime of uh, plant canopies are the amount of light uh, and quantity of incident radiation, the canopy architecture and the optical properties of leaves and the soil. The ideal leaf arrangement could be approached by a mixture of a tall erect leafed plant phenotype and a short prostrate leafed plant phenotype. For example, in the polyculture of durum wheat intercropped with winter pea plants, light use efficiently see increased by 10%. In this polyculture, complementarity exceeded interspecific competition, also due to alternative growth period, and enhanced nitrogen uptake thanks to nitrogen fixing ability of the legume. As a result, wheat yield in this polyculture increased by 20%. Water distribution between interplanted species depends not only on the root depths, but also on partitioning of evaporative demands between uh, the species components. In water-limiting conditions, the most competitive species will play a dominant role, while the growth of the less competitive species will be affected. For example, the growth of uh, cow pea uh, under uh, drought conditions was unchanged, while the intercropped pearl millet lost its biomass. While complementarity refers to partitioning resources for reducing competition between species, facilitation enables positive interaction between plant species responsible for supplementary services. For instance, facilitation occurs when one species is able to utilize an initially unavailable nutrient pool in the soil thanks to the presence and action of uh, uh, another species. High competition is observed in a high resource environment, while facilitation might be greater under harsh conditions. 
Thus, less fertile soils can potentially sustain higher diversity of mutually facilitating species. As well as higher plant diversity is required in stressful and suboptimal conditions in order to maximize biomass production. For example, facilitation is pronounced in alkaline and neutral soils, where phosphorus availability is lower and exudation of protons and organic acids is influenced and stimulated by the soil phosphorus deficiency and plant nitrogen nutrition. Competitive, complementarity and facilitative interactions are often occur simultaneously. And for example, uh, competition with cereals may foster legumes to fix more nitrogen than in monocropping situation, while legumes facilitate acquisition of acid-soluble phosphorus by cereals. It should be noted that facilitation of nutrient uptake, for example between phosphorus mobilizing and non-phosphorus mobilizing plant species, requires close association between plant species when the root system are intermingled. Solution in monocultures probably selected for enhanced competitive traits and less uh, collaborative crop behavior. Therefore, less domesticated minor crops might potentially be able to coexist and support more diverse polycultures. Plants may facilitate other plants directly by ameliorating harsh environmental condition, by altering substrate characteristic, or by uh, increasing the availability of a resource, or may act indirectly by eliminating potential competitors, introducing other uh, beneficial organisms such as soil microbes, mycorrhizae, uh, or pollinators, or providing protection from herbivores. An example of indirect facilitation is a change in the behavior of insectivorous birds with the introduction of a single row of sunflower in organically grown vegetables. Insectivorous birds utilize sunflower stand to perch while searching for prey, to hide from their own predators' birds of prey, and in addition some species also prefer to hunt in a more uh, heterogenic habitat. Facilitation uh, can be also possible from a temporal point of view, for example in case of significant delay in plant growth because of different sowing dates, when residue mineralization of one uh, crop species occur during active growth of another intercropped plant species. Functional trait ecology is often used to produce species interaction as a function of the physiological, morphological, chemical or phenological uh, characteristics of organisms. Main groups of traits that uh, underpin species distribution, community dynamics and rates of ecosystem functioning include maximum plant size, leaf traits, root traits and reproductive traits. Ecologically relevant uh, uh, functional traits or suits of traits can inform hypotheses and our uh, mechanistic understanding of both plant responses to environmental stimuli, these are so-called response traits, and how plant influence ecosystem functioning, these are effect traits. In addition, there can be trait-mediated indirect effects. For example, the mere presence of a spider has a negative effect on the grasshopper that must hide from attack and therefore reduce the consumption of its host plants. The importance of trait-based approach is demonstrated by the fact that insect functional traits, including body size and nesting habitat, are better predictors of uh, pest uh, suppression and pollination in agricultural landscapes than species identity. Ecological niche can be described as a combination of certain traits, and plants often compete via hierarchical differences in traits or fitness differences. Theoretically, more species can coexist in if niche overlap is minimized which leads to a divergence of uh, trait values within a community. Thus, it is important to select species uh, in mixtures with complementary structural and functional traits, and a successful uh, mixed species plantation may combine fast-growing with slow-growing species, short-lived with long-lived species, 
like demanding and shade tolerant species, shallow rooted with deep rooted species, nitrogen fixing and non nitrogen fixed species, or slim crowned and height oriented, with white uh, crowned and more laterally expanding species. Also, plant combination by traits has to be reviewed in dynamics. For example, companion species under sown in mature stand of other crop uh, need to show high uh, uh, tolerance to shade at the seeding stage, or it should develop its taproot deeper and at earlier developmental stage to provide an optimal root distribution when the companion species extend its root horizontally uh, through the uh, topsoil layers. It has been demonstrated in ecology that the mix of life forms, not the mix of species, define ecosystem functioning. Thus, for convenience of uh, designing uh, polyculture cropping systems, species are organized into functional groups, for example, reflecting symbiosis with nitrogen fixes bacteria and mycorrhizal fungi. For example, microbial activity and diversity are stimulated by the presence of specific plant species or functional groups, as you see uh, uh, the different capacity for symbiosis with nitrogen-fixing bacteria and mycorrhizal fungi between legumes, cereals and brassica plants, which are the main families of cover crop species. Also, subordinate uh, plant species with conservative resource use traits can promote fungal dominated communities, thus helping other intercropped plants better resist water stress and continue taking up soil nitrogen under drought. However, species grouping may not always sufficiently capture functional diversity and may obscure fine gradient between species. In addition, Many or even most of plant traits are plastic, and their expression uh, uh, depended on uh, plant diversity in a complex way, for example, shade avoidance or bigger size of organs to compensate for local resource level. Trait plasticity, in addition to the fact that databases often report mean trait values, limits the use of database traits for linking prime traits to particular functions. In video description below, you will find the links to slides as well as references and highlights to publications cited in this video lecture. Finally, I invite growers of tree nut and fruit crops, all growers with experience in crop diversification, researchers and agriculture extension specialists to participate in one of the surveys listed on this slide. The links are also provided in description to this video. With your help, we will be able to develop free software to help farmers to design crop polycultures. We also invite you to subscribe to our Facebook page Polycultures and Permaculture, where we share useful information on crop polycultures from the academic publication and directly from growers. And we invite you to share your practical experience on this page. On our website, you will find recorded conference presentation, proceedings and resolution of the Research and Practice Conference Polycultures and Permaculture, which was organized in January-February 2020. Thank you very much for your attention.